Welcome to our course on deploying DLT pipelines with orchestrators. Before we, I even get started, I just want to express, first of all, how grateful we all are for the support that we've been getting from the community. You know, it has been overwhelming over the past few months. However, in addition to that support, we've also been getting a lot of questions, um, questions mainly pertaining to deployment. See, at this stage, you guys are, for the most part, already familiar with DLT and its features. You know, things like how you can extract data from various sources and load them in different types of destinations. Now that you're able to, you know, build these pipelines on your local machine, the next step is, of course, deployment. You naturally want to be able to run these pipelines in a production level environment where you can leverage features like automation, scalability and security. And this course that you're seeing now is our response to that growing demand. We've put a lot of work into this. so. We really hope that you learn a lot and you also enjoy yourself in the process. So with that out of the way, let's get started. This section is just gonna be one long intro. We'll keep it light in terms of the technical content, but please follow along because this is gonna set you up for the subsequent sections of the course. So first, of course, let's introduce the course speakers. First is yours truly, Ashish. I'm a data engineer here at DLT Hub. And along with me are Leona and Shreyas. We all are serving as data engineers here at DLT, and we all have some kind of a background in data, whether it's you know data science, machine learning, and so on. Before we even get started, I do want to preface this with a few things, just so you understand what to expect and what to not expect from this course. So number one, is that this is a course, not a tutorial. So in a tutorial, you're basically told how to accomplish something by following steps A through Z. Well, we'll be doing that here as well, of course, but we'll be going beyond. Rather than just talking about the what, we'll also be explaining the why for each of these steps. And we want to do this because we want you to be able to build on whatever we build here in this course, or just to go your own way. And to be able to do that, you really need to understand why we do the things we do in this course, rather than just you know following along blindly. Number two is that this is a DLT course, not an orchestration course. Um, this is an important distinction to make because some of you, of course, are coming here ready and willing to learn about you know different orchestrators, which is great. But this course is made with the average DLT user in mind. So for each of the orchestrators that we cover, we'll mainly be focusing on the tools and concepts that are going to be needed for, you know, deploying our DLT pipelines and nothing more. And finally, this course will include both videos and written guides in Learn Worlds. So the videos that you're going to watch are going to give you a more in-depth explanation of, you know, certain, certain terminology, concepts, certain steps in the deployment process, whereas the written guides are something you can use to quickly reference uh, parts of the course. For example, if you want to quickly check on a certain command or things of that nature. The combination of the two is going to make it really easy for you to follow along this rather you know, technical course. So I want to make clear of the prerequisites. Firstly, it's definitely going to be important to be familiar with Python and by extension with DLT. By this point, you should have ideally already ran your first DLT pipeline, because in this course, we'll be mainly focusing on, you know, the deployment itself, and we won't spend too much time on the actual syntax of the DLT pipeline script. Next, of course, we would like you to be familiar with the command line. You'll notice later on, especially for some orchestrators, the steps for deployment are just 80%, you know, CLI commands. So again, you don't need to be a pro, but knowing the basics will get you a long way here. And finally, you will be needing GitHub and GCP accounts. Now GitHub is free, so this won't be a problem. And GCP also gives you a free trial. So you'll be able to, you know, try out a lot of their main services without any cost. So let's talk about the actual agenda. First, we'll give a quick overview on, you know, what orchestrators are, and then we'll transition by going over a quick case study 
And through this case study, you will be able to better understand why we need orchestrators for deployment in the first place. Following that, we'll break down the actual orchestrators that we'll specifically be covering in this course. There are many out there, but we'll be focusing on five. And then finally, I'll break down the course structure, basically explaining what the subsequent sections of the course are going to look like. So let's get started. Let's quickly go over what an orchestrator is in the first place. According to the Azure Architecture Center, it is a tool that helps to automate workflows. It can schedule jobs, execute workflows, and coordinate dependencies among tasks. But you didn't come all the way to this course just to get an explanation that you, know, you could find anywhere on the web. So let's tailor this explanation for DLT users. And for that, we'll use a scenario. Let's say that you know, I have a GitHub repo and I want the data related to this repo stored in a BigQuery data warehouse. Now, there's a lot of benefits to doing this. Your GitHub uh, stores a lot of valuable information, information re regarding you know, the projects, the issues, the collaborators, and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of benefit that can be had by having a powerful data warehouse like BigQuery storing this data so that you can you know, extract a lot of insights later on. So if you're familiar with DLT, you'll know that you know, building such a script is not that problematic at all. It can be done with minimal code. So here's just an, a sample of what that would look like potentially. First, of course, we're specifying the URL of these specific endpoint. Then we're creating the pipeline object and then we're running the pipeline and that's it. So you might be thinking problem solved, right? Well, not quite. And that's the whole point. Let's go over the different problems first. Number one is that rerunning is a hassle. If we were to use this script that you, know, you just saw before, you would be rerunning the same data, extracting, transforming, and loading the same data every single time. And you know that's slow and it's a waste of your compute. The second problem is that your data may have gaps and errors, and this can happen oftentimes with sources. You know, sometimes your sources might have missing values at the time that you collect it, and there might also be you know changes in fields. The third problem is a lot more basic, and it's that your pipeline is just too slow. When you're running a, a DLT pipeline to a Python script on your local machine, you will face you know limited compute and the lack of a means of parallelization. The problem number four is that, you know, there are just no logs preserved. If you're familiar with DLT, you'll know that you can get your logs um, shown to you in your terminal, you know, when you run your pipeline. However, when you kill that terminal, those logs are gone, right? They're not preserved. So you don't get to see a record of your past runs, which can make it hard to, you know, debug any errors you may have. Problem number five is a lot more basic. You know, I just keep forgetting to run the pipeline. So with this current arrangement, the pipeline will only be run through manual triggers. And that's not really a reliable way to collect data because now you run the risk of your data going stale and there's no automation in this, this current approach that we're using. Problem number six is that, is that my team wouldn't be able to run my code. This is a typical, you know, problem um, in such projects, you know, something that works in my machine may not work in someone else's machine. And that can be because of an environment mismatch. That can be because you know, issues with credentials. Overall, uh, it's a problem when your code is not rerunnable, when it's not reproducible. And lastly, there's a chance that your laptop won't be able to run your pipeline. With your running, with your local machine, you are constrained by, you know, resource limits and that can run the risk of, you know, certain pipeline runs just failing. Let's look at everything, you know, collectively. Out of those seven problems that I, you know, went over, two of them are actually addressable through DLT alone. For example, you know, if you have an issue with extracting redundant data, you can address this by implementing incremental loading. And I'll get more into what that is a bit later. The second is, of course, the gaps and errors in data. If you find that you know your historical data is lacking in any way, 
then you can always implement bit backfilling just to rerun the data collection for that specific time period. However, if we look at the remaining five problems, you'll see that there actually isn't a, a surefire way to you know, address all of them through DLT alone. So now that begs the question, what do we do here? And the answer is simple. We deploy a pipeline with an orchestrator. So let's circle back to that question I asked in the beginning, you know, what is an orchestrator? Well, aside from, you know, in addition to the explanation provided by Azure, you know, in our case, an orchestrator is a tool that addresses all of these problems that you see here. In terms of, you know, pipeline execution being too slow, we can address this now by leveraging parallelization since your orchestrators will provide multiple cores. If we're worried about lack of logs, well, now orchestrators preserve our logs and they also centralize them. So anyone at any time can always, you know, look at current or previous runs and just inspect their logs if they want to debug. If you're worried about inconsistent pipeline execution, you can now implement scheduling. That means that you can define when you want your pipelines to run. It can be event-based or it can automatically run periodically, maybe hourly, daily, weekly, and so on. And if you are struggling to share your you know, code with your team, well, now orchestrators give you a shared workspace where everyone can access the DLT pipelines, everyone can run them, inspect the logs, and perform any monitoring. And finally, the issue of limited capacity on your local machine is easy to address now because orchestrators can be deployed in the cloud. And in the cloud, you can use as much compute as you need. Just now, I went over all the different benefits of an orchestrator, but now let's go back to this course and discuss the specific things that we'll be going over. First is credentials management. If you don't already know, with DLT, you can store your credentials in a secrets TOML file. However, that secrets TOML file won't be accessible when you deploy in an orchestrator because now it's in a different environment altogether. So you need a new approach towards accessing these credentials, which is something you'll learn. We'll also go over how you can you know, in incorporate you know, incremental loading and backfilling in your DLT pipelines. You'll see how we can speed up processes by leveraging parallelization. You'll learn how to incorporate scheduling. So how you can tell your orchestrator uh, when it should run its, uh, when it should run your pipeline and how often. You will be able to know how you can monitor your pipelines, basically seeing all your past runs and seeing their statuses and you'll also be able to learn how, where you can find the actual logs for these runs in your orchestrator. And finally, we'll teach you how to actually go beyond just deploying your pipelines locally and actually leverage cloud, where again, you can uh, enjoy the perks of you know, scalability, security, and automation. So up till now, I've been using the term orchestrator very vaguely, when in reality, we'll be covering six different orchestrators in this course. So here I'm going to introduce them to you um, very briefly, though, because we'll be covering them a lot more in depth in the subsequent sections. So first, we have Apache Airflow. This is arguably the most well-known orchestrator in the market. They're very widely adopted and boast a bunch of different operators that can facilitate different types of tasks ranging from Python and Bash to HTTP. We have Daxter, which basically takes a data-first approach to orchestration. They represent their data items through assets, and these assets have data lineage and observability built in. So if you are looking for a solution that not only has orchestration, but also strong data governance, then Daxter is a great option. Next, we have Prefect, which is basically designed to feel like Python. In Prefect, you can define your tasks and jobs directly with Python code without any additional config. So this is great and easy to adopt for developers who are already you know, familiar with Python, which you most likely are if you're DLT users. Modal is unique in that it is a serverless orchestrator. 
And what that means is that you yourself don't have to provision any machines or clusters for your jobs. Rather, all you have to do is define the jobs yourself and then modal will take care of the rest. It'll scale your jobs automatically. So this is a great option if you're looking for something that requires minimal infrastructure setup. Next, we have Kestra. Kestra is a config driven approach for workflows. In Kestra, you define your workflows in YAML, which makes it very easy to you know, version and share. It also includes very flexible execution uh, backends and has a strong UI for visualization. And finally, we have Orchestra, which is relatively new to the market. They have a lot of rich integrations to the modern data stack, including Snowflake, DBT, BigQuery, Airbyte, and it is able to facilitate these integrations with relatively little code and config. Orchestra also places a lot of focus on observability, and it has a relatively smaller learning curve and that it allows you to quickly set up your pipelines without having to do a lot of you know, config or a lot of setup. So we are almost done with the introduction. Great job making it this far. I want to now explain what the remainder of the course is going to look like. Right after the introduction, we have a coding demo in which we show you the DLT pipeline that we'll be running and deploying for each of the six orchestrators. So from the coding demo onwards, it's going to be pretty hands-on. You'll be following along with what we say and do. Once we're done with the coding demo, there will be six different subsections, each section dedicated to a single orchestrator in which we give you a more in-depth exploration of the orchestrator and show you how to deploy your DLT pipeline in that orchestrator. After those six subsections, we'll then be going over the assignment. The assignment is basically a very basic task that you will have to complete before you get to complete the course and get your certification. So with that, we're officially done with the introduction. I hope you're as excited as I am, and I'll see you guys at the coding demo.